Today I'm going to be reviewing Anime's Guide to Childbirth by Anime Gaskin, the nation's leading midwife, and I would just like to talk a little bit about it with you all. Um, some of the main topics I'm going to cover from this book are the hormones of labor and the sphincter law which was uh, kind of coined by Ina May Gaskin, and just the construction of the book and how much I enjoyed it, the things that I really liked about this book. There's really not anything bad to say about this book. In fact, it's it's sort of it's sort of like a textbook, but oh, sunglasses. It's sort of like a textbook, but uh, it's it's really easy to read. So. It's got a, an, an appendix and a glossary and an index and lots of resources and reference material that you can check out. So if you don't know about Anime Gaskin and the Farm, you might want to look it up. Oh, I kind of like this. I, I get nervous about my eyes. Anyway, so just a little information on Anime herself. She's been a midwife since 1971 in Summertown, Tennessee. She and her partners have attended over 2,900 births and this was written back in 2003 so I'm sure that it's more than that now. Anime's Guide to Childbirth it is uh, split into two parts. Um, her book Spiritual Midwifery is very popular and it is also a book of birth stories and if you are a birth junkie like me you will like this book. It starts off with a large section of birth stories, some of which are the midwives that work at the farm as well, uh, some of their birth stories. So that's really interesting and it's fun to read if you really love birth like I do. And there are a couple of little blurbs here and there by Anime to clarify certain situations which is really nice if you like the technical part of it. The second part is the essentials of birth and there it covers a great deal of material um, almost anything that you can imagine that you'd have to look look at for birth and these births took place at either the homes of the families or at the birth center at the farm. There's breech birth and there's feedback and one of my favorite quotes is actually in the introduction to the book. Uh, Wherever and however you intend to give birth, your experience will impact your emotions, your mind, your body, and your spirit for the rest of your life. And I love that. Often, the experience of birth is kind of cast aside. The mother's experience of birth is seen as not as important. As long as there's healthy baby and healthy mom, that's all that matters. Well, I don't think that's true. And Anime really talks about the mind-body connection in this book and how it is important that the mind and the experience is is honored during birth because it affects birth and it is with you for the rest of your life. Ask any woman. She remembers her birth experience and she remembers the person who del helped deliver her baby and she remembers what it was like. Your experience does matter. And Inamei and her, the midwives that she does work with, they do transport to hospital when there is an emergency. Stats for this book, cesarean birth, 1.4% forcep and vacuum extraction delivery is 0.05% and the national average for cesarean rate is 32.3% as of the year 2007. A couple of the things that I really pulled from this book that I thought were very valuable were the sphincter law and the mind-body connection and the hormones of birth. Anime talks about there being a subtle complex interplay of changing hormone levels during birth. The hormone cocktail and it's just this cocktail of hormones that are released at certain times and they all have a purpose and when we interfere with that natural process the formula to that cocktail can be sort of messed up. Things won't go as smoothly as they are meant to. And these hormones are consisted of prostaglandins, oxytocin, adrenaline, and endorphins. And they all play a part in a smooth natural childbirth. Prostaglandins. The job of a prostaglandin, a natural prostaglandin, which is included in sperm actually, helps soften the cervix and thin it so that it can be ready to dilate. The oxytocin stimulates the uterus 
and brings contractions on and it's called the love hormone you'll often hear of a mother talking about when she has her baby and the baby is placed on her chest she'll feel this overwhelming just love any pain that she might have been feeling totally disappears this is that oxytocin it helps mother and baby bond and it's the same hormone that is released during love making it is that same hormone that's released when you're among friends and you're talking and laughing that feeling of love just contentment and happiness of being with people that you love and if the oxytocin is like an accelerator then the adrenaline is like breaks to labor so what happens when endorphins are released is your heart rate increases it's that fight or flight reflex that is triggered it can make labor stop that is why you hear many stories of women who go to the hospital they're checked in their labor was going strong and then suddenly labor slows down or stops and when we have fear during labor adrenaline can kick in when we're afraid of what's going to happen when we're unaware of what's going on with our body when we believe all of those media images of screaming women during labor and we think something horrible is going on during labor that adrenaline can kick in and it will stop labor instead of the endorphins and the oxytocin that overcome us and fill us with joy that fear it kind of freezes us up that adrenaline we have to make sure during labor that it's not something that inhibits us from labor progressing well endorphins are nature's opiates according to IMA and it's why we need people around us to love and support us and it actually can block pain reception so when we have that support and love those good feelings that come on it helps us to have that positive experience of childbirth prostaglandin oxytocin adrenaline and the endorphins when we have those interventions that are unnecessary we can end up with a hormone cocktail that is mixed wrong. We have too much of one, which could be adrenaline, and not enough of the other. Oxytocin. Now, Pitocin is actually a synthetic version of oxytocin because it helps clamp down on that uterus and cause contractions. That can block natural oxytocin. Before you use Pitocin, you need to know what the side effects are. I'm getting ready to get Sarah Buckley's gentle birth gentle mothering and she heard her speak in a lot of interviews on podcasts she explains the hormone cocktail of labor very well and when I read her book I will be doing a review on that too um, and some of those podcasts I'll list them below because I think they're very educational the sphincter law anime talks about the sphincter law in this book and the sphincters excretory cervical vaginal sphincters all work best in an environment of intimacy and privacy where there won't be any interruptions. Imagine that you're sitting on the toilet and you're about to do your business and four of your neighbors walk in and they start talking to you. Are you going to sit there and finish your bowel movement? I don't think so. Your body may tense up if it feels that it is being intruded sort of like what we were talking before with the adrenaline the adrenaline can be caused by fear or a, a discomfort or nervousness and that can cause those sphincters to close up labor is best done in an atmosphere where there is no interruption and where there can be privacy labor should be done in an environment that is peaceful comfortable calm so another thing that anime talks about with the sphincter law is that it doesn't respond to commands like push or relax not like it has a trigger on it so a relaxed face is directly linked to relaxed sphincters. When I was in labor, I remember a couple of times the nurse looking at me. I was I was in the tub and I was laboring and as as I started to go through transition and it started to be a little bit more painful, I remember her saying, hey, she would tell me, relax your forehead, relax your forehead. And that really helped the baby to just come down. I stopped tensing up. I let my body just relax. What's going on in your face is linked to what's going on in the rest of your body. Sphincters work best in, a, in an environment of familiarity and privacy. 
you may be more comfortable at a birth center where you've seen your room where it's more of a home-like setting or at home or among your own things with a home birth midwife or in a hospital where you've set the environment, dim the lights, it's kind of set guidelines in your birth plan for that. So what helps the sphincters open up? We have laughing, enjoying yourself, cracking a couple of jokes, making mom feel comfortable. That can help your sphincter open up. There is something about that mind-body connection that is imperative to a gentle and relaxed birth that Anime talks about. She gives a bit of a history on midwifery and moving freely during labor with some diagrams. And there's a glossary with terms and an appendix and uh, resources. It really should be a textbook because it has so much information. If you are expecting or you know someone who is expecting or you are a birth junkie or a labor pro birth professional, you definitely should read this book because it is full of evidence-based information and it is a great read. So I'm going to link my birth stories below for J and M. I am also planning on attending a midwifery assistant birth workshop on the farm where Anna Mae Gaskin, the woman who wrote this book, is uh, where she started her practice and also where um, she trains other midwives. So I plan on going and I'm also going to link my GoFundMe uh, project to this uh, video for you and some other, a link to my first birth book review, Joyous Child Birth Changes the World. And I have enjoyed doing this. Thank you so much. I'm just filming it. Hello, boy. I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs>